All right, welcome to your first flipped classroom experience here in eighth grade social studies with Mrs. Jones. It's me talking to you. So remember here that you need to take notes, um, two column notes preferably, so that when you come to class tomorrow you can use these ideas and apply them to the conversation that we will be having. So make sure you take those notes. They, I will be checking for them tomorrow. Um, this presentation is on the motives for colonization in the new world, as you can see. And there's a top seven. But before we get into those seven motives, let's talk about a couple key words here. Colonization is a huge word. And it's the first unit that we'll be talking about for the next three weeks in class. We'll be talking about colonization. What colonization is, is when a group of people decide to leave where they were living and move to a new location and actually make it part of their country. Um, a lot of explorers explore, they don't always stay. And so colonization is where when they actually stay and create a new um, colony is what the word would be. Um, people don't just get up and move for no reason. There are definite motives for doing that. Now here we're talking about colonization of the new world. And the new world was called the new world because Europeans had not seen it before. Now that doesn't mean that it wasn't here. We know that there are Native Americans here um, on the American continent for centuries and centuries and millions of years prior to Europeans coming. But they called it the new world because they had not seen it before. So when we talk about colonization and about this new world, we're talking about America before Europeans came here. So, um, but people don't just get up and decide to move without motives. And so we're going to talk about these seven, seven top motives for people to actually colonize. Now there's a lot of different ones and seven is just a broad, is a number. Um, there could be more, um, but these are the ones that we're going to be talking about. Um, the first one is curiosity. People are curious. When Columbus had found the New World, Europeans were curious about what was there. And so a lot of people colonized because they were curious about what was going on there. Um, just like us today, you may be curious about, you know, this class or about a friend or a lot of other things in your life. But um, curiosity is the number one reason or motive that people came to the New World. The second one is wealth. Now, the Spanish had been here, and they had found lots of gold. So a lot of other Europeans had found or had the desire to get wealthy also. Now, the, key, the thing about this, though, is that a lot of times that money that they found, the gold that they found, um, would have to go back to the king or queen or the person that actually financed their trip. They got to keep some of it, but a lot of it went back to the country. And colonization is all about the country of origin where the people came from and that's important that's an important thing to know about um, colonization so the number two is wealth the third one is fame have you ever thought of it doing something so you could be famous well they had the same things back in the the 1600s um, early 1700s um, as they colonized some people came over to colonize to be famous people they'd go back to Europe and people would um, give them lots of things and and treat them very well and so people wanted to be famous um, and that was a great opportunity for them to be able to have fame if they had never if Europeans had never seen these places before they went back and they talked about them fame was a big a big part in motivations for people to colonize the fourth one is national pride now this is a pretty big one um, the nations in Europe all colonized well, most of them colonized. Um, and what happened was England or France or whoever it was would come over and actually establish that land as their land, um, part of their country in a different location. And why they wanted to do that was because at the time, and even today, more land means more power. And these nations wanted to have a lot of power. There was a lot of rivalry between them and they wanted more power. When they had more land, they had power. So they colonized for more land so they would have power, and that's called national pride. The fifth reason is religion. Now that one's pretty self-explanatory. 
Um, a lot of people believed at the time, and still do today, that their religion is awesome and that they felt the need to spread it to other people, um, that that was what they needed to do. And so people would colonize and they would send people over to actually spread the religion, to convert natives especially, um, to the Christian religion or to whatever religion. It was mainly Christian here at this time. They also would colonize, remember that they're leaving a country and coming to a new country for religious freedom so that they could practice the religion that they wanted to practice and not have a king or queen tell them exactly what to do. Now the sixth one is foreign goods and if you can look at the pictures there, there's a picture of silk, of jewels and gold and of spices. And really what that means is foreign goods is that they're goods that they can sell or they can acquire in a different place and bring it back. Now when they do that, um, these new places that they went to, it was pretty awesome because they found new goods that they could sell. And a lot of them became commodities, huge commodities for the European nations, especially silk and spices and gold. And that's what they were looking for. Um, they were looking for not only gold itself, but also for jewels and spices and silks and other things that were made in those countries so they could come back and sell them. And they became very popular in Europe. The seventh one and last one we're going to talk about here is faster, cheaper trade routes. Now if you look at the pictures here, you have a boat and you have a camel. Which one is going to move faster? The boat is, because it's on water. So they were trying to find ways to get the goods, the foreign goods, faster. Um, they would have to travel by camel a lot through China and through the Middle East to be able to get goods. Now they had ships that they could um, take and go faster, which meant that it was a faster trip, which meant it was cheaper. They didn't have to pay tolls, go through certain countries. They could just go across the oceans and um, create trade routes so that they could actually um, trade goods faster and cheaper. Huge, huge part of the whole colonization motives. And so basically those are the seven. Um, let's go back through them. Faster, cheaper trade routes, foreign goods, religion, national pride, fame, wealth, and curiosity. So there they are again, so you can see them. Now, the big question here is, there's, those are the seven motives, the seven top motives. Now, we're going to be learning about different colonies and the colonization of North America which is, as you've heard, the 13 original colonies. Now, as we learn about the 13 original colonies, that you need to look for examples of motives. You will be exploring the, these ideas again as we study and learn about these colonies, and you will have to be able to pick out what motives they may have had. If they were coming for national pride, if they were coming for wealth, if they were coming for religion, um, whatever the case may be, that's a, that's going to be a, a huge part of what we will be talking about the first couple weeks. So make sure that you have things ready.